What's going on guys? Mark back here with yet another video. Today it appears as though Sony has released their next generation uh, Sony RX10 Mark IV. I mean, they keep cranking these damn things out. So if you guys are interested in exploring some of the new features that they are incorporating into this brand new camera, let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about it. So um, the first thing that I do want to say is that it has not been that long since they just released the Sony RX uh, 10 Mark III. I mean, I just reviewed that camera last year. I mean, it was brand spanking new. So this Mark IV is roughly a year old, or maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. I can't remember the exact release date uh, on this, uh, but it is officially available. And while we have uh, seen some vast improvements, I don't think that some of those improvements have made it back from the Mark III into, these, uh, into this Mark IV, uh, or at least the Mark II. A lot of people have been talking about, well, I would have bought the Mark III if it had had the built-in ND filters or whatever, uh, like the Mark II had, but it didn't, so a lot of people kind of stayed away from it. And I think that a lot of people um, had their hopes really high on this brand new Mark IV that's coming out, um, and they were hoping that it was actually going to have those ND filters brought back, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share with you. And if we look here on... The website, it actually says that we are getting a 20.1 megapixel, one inch Exmor RS backside illuminated CMOS sensor. All good things. Bion's X image processor and front end LSI. All good things. Zeiss uh, 2.4 to 4 zoom lens. Again, all good things. We're still maintaining the exact same focal range as we did on the Mark III, which was the 24 to 600 millimeter. Uh, we're getting a 2.36 million dot OLED TrueFinder EVF. Uh, again, fantastic resolution for an EVF. The three inch 1.4 million uh, dot tilting touchscreen. That was the one that kind of disappointed me just a little bit. If I if I was to be perfectly honest, I was a little disappointed by that. I was honestly I was hoping for. Uh, a fully articulating screen in this particular instance. And I think that a lot of other people were as well. Um, the main reason being is that this, especially the Mark II, maybe not so much the Mark III, but this was going to be one of those fantastic uh, video camera replacements, right? If it had had a fully articulating screen, I think more of us would have been, you know, hyped about this thing. But apparently that's just not going to be the case uh, with this uh, particular camera either. It sucks because I shit you not folks, if Sony would ever, and I do mean ever release a, a camera with a fully articulating screen, you combine that with its amazing image quality. Now, granted their support is pretty much shit, but if they had, you know, the, the, the amazing autofocus and all the support that goes along with, um, uh, being able to shoot video with these cameras, a fully articulating screen would absolutely dominate uh, the market. I don't know why Sony refuses to do a fully articulating screen. Um, I, they might be saving it for one of their A7 line of cameras, something like that. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm really not for sure what the hell they're thinking personally. But if they had it, if they actually had it, it would just be off the hook. But they don't. So um, we're getting the ultra high definition 4K and 30P uh, video, full HD 1080 uh, at 960 frames per second. We're talking ridiculously ultra slow mo here. Ridiculously slow motion here. And we're getting it in 1080P. No more of that 480 stuff. No more of that 720P stuff. We're getting 960 frames per second in full HD. I mean, ridiculous. Um, it's just that right there, I think for a lot of people would be enough to sell this thing. Granted, I personally think that it's a little on the pricey side, $1,700 for this. While it can do everything, I think that the reason that they are pricing it so high is because the people that are looking at this camera are probably only going to buy this one camera. They're, they're probably not an interchangeable lens camera type person. Uh, so they just want one camera, one lens that can do damn near everything. 
All right. Um, the, it's the uh, fast hybrid AF system. It's going to have 315 autofocus points. So quite frankly, it doesn't go all the way edge to edge, but it gets pretty damn close. It's a hell of a lot better than DSLRs. And if you're already acclimated to a you know mirrorless line of uh, cameras, which have lots and lots of coverage with those autofocusing points, this is going to suit most people. 90% of people perfectly fine. <clears throat> Maybe even more than that. I mean, most people don't even need the amount of autofocusing points that we have, but having more uh, is definitely a welcome change when you want to alter and change up your composition just a little bit. Uh, the ISO is 1,200, uh, 12,800 and 24 frames per second continuous shooting. Did you hear that? Okay, this thing is going to have 24 frames per second continuous shooting. That's insane. Okay, so they must be borrowing some of the technology from their A9. Obviously, this is going to be an electronic shutter. This is not a mechanical shutter. Uh, it being mirrorless and everything, but you're talking about a baby A9 almost. Granted, not interchangeable lens, but I used the RX Mark III, the RX10 Mark III. That was absolutely a monster of a camera. Okay, 24 to 60 with a, a relatively fantastic uh, aperture range, uh, good ISO performance, especially out of a one-inch sensor. So a lot of people uh, kind of poo-poo on the one-inch sensor, and honestly, I did quite a bit myself. But it was actually good, okay? Not as good as, say, like the A6300 or the A6500 for, you know, obvious reasons. But uh, they keep improving the uh, ISO performance uh, of these cameras to such an extent that it almost doesn't even matter anymore to a lot of people. Uh, and I have to say that 95% of everyone out there that uses a camera, this is going to suit their needs. So... For them to price it so aggressively with such amazing features, I think that it's going to be kind of a no-brainer. I think that a lot of people will buy this camera. So um, we are, let me find it. Let's do the, the other specs just real quick because uh, these are the actual official specs since they just got released. Uh, image stabilization, we're going to have optical image stabilization. And I did use this uh, on the uh, Sony RX uh, Mark III. And this my friends, is good optical uh, steady shot. I mean, it is. Optical steady shot is extremely good in the Sony system. And using it all the way out to 600 millimeters, it is ridiculously steady. So, you know, if you're worried about it not necessarily having in-body image stabilization, don't be. Nine times out of ten, uh, the optical image stabilization is going to be even more than what you need, okay? Um so filter thread size is going to be stay the same. The optical is going to be 25 times. Clear image zoom is 50 times. And I do want to say that the clear image zoom is fantastic. I used it uh, on the RX10 uh, Mark II and the Mark III. You genuinely can get ridiculously clear images out of clear zoom, uh, clear image zoom. And I, I did the test on the RX10 uh, Mark III. You can go back into my videos and find the review of that. I was out about a quarter of a mile, and I was recording um, a, a radio tower. I could literally count the bolts on the tower because of that clear image zoom. Absolutely fantastic image quality. Uh, so if you're looking for a long-range lens that also has optical image steady shot, okay, so that you can get good uh, steady... Uh, focus not not having any motion blur this particular steady shot is rated for up to about five or five and a half stops of light worth of image uh stabilization so ridiculously good um so the iso sensitivity <coughs> excuse me is going to be 100 to 12,800 you can do an expanded mode down to 64 um i don't know how good it's going to be um but you know once we test it out we'll be able to to see a little bit more um most of the Sony stuff here, center-weighted, multi-spot as far as your metering, lots of uh, uh, of uh, shutter speeds. But here's the one that I want to highlight for you guys. That now is on par with what I have in my Fuji X-T2. Having a shutter speed in the electronics of going from 1 to 32 thousandths of a second, okay? This is top-tier shutter speeds for an electronic shutter. So for those of you that have been, you know, I don't know, pausing or waiting, if you really just want an all-in-one, 
this might be the one to kind of look at, okay? Because there are other all-in-ones, but this one genuinely looks like it's got all the goods. 24 frames per second, uh, the optical image stabilization all the way up to 600. We've got a lot of features here. So exposure metering modes, we can do uh, compensation, negative three to plus three. We've got all the different uh, aperture priority, intelligent auto, manual memory recall, movie panorama, shot, programmed auto, lots of different shooting modes, uh, anti-blur, or anti-motion blur, or fireworks, gourmet, landscape, macro, uh, night portrait. I, I do want to make a quick uh, statement on the macro. They do have really good close focusing. The RX-3, the RX-10 Mark III, had fantastic. I mean, one inch, maybe, you know, roughly one inch away, I was able to focus. So the close focusing is fantastic. You know, couple that up with the range that you can get out of 600 millimeters. It's ridiculous. Okay, sorry, I had to cough there for a second. Um, so you get night portrait, night scene, pet mode, portrait, sports, sunset. Okay, um, white balance, all the good ones. Uh, buffer, continuous shooting, up to 20 frames per second at 20.1 megapixels for up to 249 frames in JPEG format. Now, some of you may not be impressed, but for a consumer-grade camera, I mean, I, I don't know that this is consumer-grade. It sounds pretty fucking professional-grade to me. But 24 frames per second at 20 megapixels for up to 240 frames, that's literally a 10-second hold, okay? If you can't get the shots that you want of your kids or pets or, or any... Sorry about that, guys. The the app crashed yet again. I, I, I have no idea why it keeps doing that to me. So I apologize. All right. So, so yeah, you're probably going to be blind in your shooting eye if you can't get what you're looking for uh, out of 24 frames per second at 249 frames. Okay, up to 249 frames. So that's 10 full seconds that you could lay on your shutter and it uh, it'd be able to... To take shots granted it is in jpeg mode but i mean like i said i think that the vast majority of people these days only shoot jpeg very very few of us you know the ones that do professional work that like to do heavy heavy retouching and stuff like that we're about the only ones that actually like to shoot in raw so all right so uh we've got flash modes auto flash on off rear sync uh slow sync red eye reduction all the good ones Maximum effective flash range. So, I mean, it's going to be a built-in flash. So, I'm not looking like... I'm not looking at this thing like it's going to be amazing because it's just not, okay? Uh, the recording, uh, if we get into video, up to 29 minutes. So, they have not uh, removed that 29-minute recording limit, unfortunately. Um, audio recording says built-in mic with video. That disappoints me just a little bit. I'm hoping... Genuinely hoping that they do, in fact, have uh, some I.O. So I need to, but it doesn't say. Uh, connectivity, HDMI, micro USB, USB 2.0, uh, tilty screen, diopter. Yeah. If anyone knows right now, if I know, uh, or, or if you know, does this thing actually have a microphone in jack? Because as of right now, I can't tell that it does. Um... Let's take a look at some of these pictures here and see if we can deduce any of the input. Yes, we do have a microphone and we have headphones. All right. That's that's a good thing because I was I was getting a little worried there that they weren't going to have it. So we do have microphone and we do have headphone. This thing is going to pretty much do 
everything that you would want it to do. So if you want to take stills, if you want to take them very close, if you want to take them far away, if you need to get a flash shot, you do have a built-in flash. <coughs> if you need to do some uh, clean HDMI out, I do believe that the Mark III uh, supported that. So I'm pretty sure that the Mark IV will support that as well. Uh, cl so close focusing, long distance, you've got your uh, single, auto, continuous. Uh, you're going to have digital manual focus, manual focus. Uh, a, a fantastic EVF with 2.3 million dots. Um, uh, a tilty screen so that you can get your uh, low angles and your higher angles. Decent ISO performance. Um, like I said, I actually tested the ISO performance of the RX10 Mark III, and it was good. I mean, it was better than I was expecting it to be out of a one-inch sensor. So definitely better than that. But anyway, <clears throat> so we're getting the backside illuminate sensor as well. So I am interested in what you guys actually have to say. We're getting a lot in this camera for such a reasonable price tag. I'm actually quite impressed. So take a look over here at the chat room real quick. Uh, hey, Dunny, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, Pedro, how have you been? Good to see you. It has been a bit. Um, said it before, but the A5100 with an update to 4K and a mic port, and I'd buy it all day. I agree. I actually like the form factor of the smaller cameras much better than I did the RX10. Um, that's just because the RX10 is ridiculously big. Really, really big camera. Of course, it does have to house a lot, um, but you also don't get any of the overheating issues that we normally saw with the A5100, the A6000, um, and the A6300, obviously, and the A6500. So definitely, there are some upsides to having a little bit more room so that the camera can breathe. But yes, I do prefer the smaller form factors. Um. Jorge Martinez says 1698. No thanks. Honestly, it's a pretty good price for everything that you're getting in this camera. So I wouldn't discount it yet. I mean, I paid sixteen hundred dollars for you know seventeen hundred dollars for one lens. So to have both a camera and a lens that basically does you know almost everything, and does it? You know, it may not be the best, but it does everything pretty damn good. So the Mark III was pretty damn good. Uh, even so, the uh, enough so that it would it made me take pause and consider buying it so and i know a lot of other people that still use it especially the mark ii uh as their primary video camera because it is such a good form factor for video uh dunny monster says be interested to see what panasonic's answer to this will be given their fc 2000 is pretty good already honestly there's nothing wrong with uh panasonic's version of their bridge camera they're all in ones the problem that i always seem to have with there is the autofocus it's just nowhere near as good as sony's <coughs> Uh, McGuire says, uh, looking forward to the RX100 Mark VI. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people are. Um, said that I owned, uh, he also says, I owned the RX10 Mark III, sold it too heavy, but a great camp. And I agree, that was half the reason why I ended up not investing in it, uh, was simply because it is just huge. <coughs> very, very heavy camera. Uh Hey, Eric Marks, what's going on, man? He says, uh, is it still a one-inch sensor for that price? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, indeed, uh, low light sucks. It's not that bad. Like I said, it's it's not as good as APS-C or full frame. We all know that. It's still going to be better than a cell phone. So if you're in the market, and this is generally for people that just want to carry one camera and one lens, you can carry a whole bag full of lenses, or you could have a single camera with a single built-in lens. Carrying that one camera is a hell of a lot lighter than carrying a couple of bodies with two or three different, you know, varying focal range lenses, not to mention the bulk and everything else. So it is kind of worth it. The <coughs> unfortunate thing is this thing, I think, only still has one card slot. I'm going to double check, though. But I think it's still a single card slot. Yeah, it looks like it to me. Could be wrong, but I think it is single card, which that's unfortunate because uh, a dual card slot would probably put this thing, I don't know, a lot of people would end up buying that instead of some of these other options, to be perfectly honest. 
Um, Dunny Monster says, always like the RX-10 series. If I could only own one camera for everything, this is the type of camera I'd go for. Very impressed uh, with both my one-inch sensor cameras. Yep. And that's, that's just the way it goes. Now, I have been talking all day, and I have not coughed a single time, so why I'm doing it now, I have no idea. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, the ESA says $17, who's this marketed for the person that wants one camera, the person that wants one lens, the person that wants to do both photo and video, the person that doesn't want to carry around an interchangeable lens system. They grab their camera and they've got their whole bag of lenses with them. That's who that's targeted for. And someone that doesn't want to fiddle or fart around with interchangeable lenses. And this has a decent F-stop range. We're talking F 2.8. So it's not ridiculously fast, um, but ISO performance is pretty damn good these days. So you go from F4 or F2.8 to F4 at 600 millimeters, which is, you know, better than most ultra super telephoto lenses. So um, the guy who says everyone who doesn't want to uh, change and buy lenses, exactly. Uh the original A7R has the highest dynamic range of any Sony camera as per Photon uh, to Photos website. Um, Maguire says, I would take an A6300 plus lenses. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to also consider that different strokes for different folks. Some people like the form factor of a DSLR better than they do these smaller, slimmer, uh, thinner uh, mirrorless cameras. So, you know, some people got bigger hands. Some people got chunkier you know, sausage like fingers. They like a bigger purchase on their camera. So, you know, whatever ends up feeling the most comfortable in your hands. That's what she said. Uh, okay. So Shrag. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, Mike says reasonable price. Hey, come on, Mark. It's a one inch sensor. Okay. I will grant every single one of you out there that it's, it seems high. Okay. When you're thinking of a one inch sensor, most of us think that we're looking at uh, an inferior camera. Okay. I did the review on the RX10 Mark III. This is not honestly for everything that you're getting. I mean, don't just look at the sensor because that will be unimpressive. It's even unimpressive to me. Would I like to see uh, an APS C size sensor in there? Absolutely. Would that make it? Even more worth the price? Absolutely. Um, but what you're looking at is the total package of the focal range, the, the, the aperture range that you're able to use, the usable aperture range, the ISO performance, which was ridiculously good on the last iteration. This is not a piece of crap camera. Uh, extremely well built. It's got everything that a person that doesn't want to mess around would want to have. Video, photo, and a lot of it, you're also paying for a lot of software development, a lot of ingenuity that goes into, held 90, you know, 9,400 or uh, 960 frames per second. There's a lot of tech that's built into this camera. And when you're talking about a one-inch sensor and only one-inch sensor, not that impressive. But when you take the entire thing, I, I honestly, I think it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth the price tag. Especially if you've actually used one of the RX-10 Mark uh, cameras ever. Uh, if you've ever used one, yes, they are thick, they're bulky, and they're a bit heavy, but it's all in one. All right, now you take an interchangeable lens camera and you start stacking two or three other lenses together and you've got three times the weight of that one camera. So there are a lot of benefits to, to buying a camera in this form factor at this price tag. Um, Maguire says outside it's a killer lens. I've even done successful stuff inside. So lighting is everything, whether you're inside or outside, no one lights in the dark. If you want to shoot in the dark, you don't buy this. You buy an a seven S that's just the way it goes. Um, just for comparison, uh, the gray a seven R Mark II is, uh, 1885 euros right now in the UK. but it's interchangeable lens. Okay, so from your previous use, this is from Pedro. He says, from your previous use, how was the battery life? What can we expect? 
<clears throat> in my experience, I noticed roughly about the same amount of battery life as I was getting out of my A6300 at the time. So not stellar, not over the moon fantastic, but good, usable. About an hour or so, roughly, of video, depending on if it was 1080p, you know, maybe a bit longer. Um, so it really just depends on uses, but it uses, at least the, the RX10 Mark III did, it used the exact same batteries as all the other Sony cameras use, I think. Yeah, I'm almost positive. So it was pretty damn close either way. Um, McGuire says, low light tracking inside, hunting all the time. That was my experience initially. And then when they upgraded the firmware, I didn't get that anymore. It was a whole lot better at doing tracking indoors after the, the firmware update. Uh, Dunny Monster says, if uh, it had an APS-C sensor with 600 millimeter zoom, it would be absolutely huge. Yes, it would. <laughs> yes, it would. Uh, Mike also says, I understand uh, what you're saying, Mark. Uh, it's just not for me. I prefer taking my A6500 with one or two lenses everywhere. If I need 600 millimeters uh, out of some specific shooting uh, and I take whatever I need. And that's exactly right. That's exactly what you ought to do. Uh, if you're an interchangeable lens shooter, but I do know lots of people that are just like Mark. If you only had to buy one camera or if you didn't want to swap out lenses, if you didn't want to hassle with any of that, you know, most people, if, and you know these people, you've seen these people, they go out and they'll buy like a Canon Rebel, you know, T5i or something, and they get the kit lens, which is 18 to 55. And yes, it's only four or $500, but those kind of people, and that's the only lens they ever buy. Um, so they, you know, they, they do their best, but their framing's always shit because they don't really understand composition or anything. But if they had that extra reach, they could compose their shot a bit better. They could get in a little bit tighter. This would be the lens. This would be the camera. This would be the system that I would probably recommend to most because the autofocus is just ridiculously good. They wouldn't have as much to worry about. You know, they just put them, put in their card. They've got the enti their entire lens lineup right there at their fingertips, and they just got to point at the thing and start shooting. So makes it a whole lot easier for people that are maybe just getting into photography or people that don't want to hassle with uh, a, a lot of accessories, uh, a lot of extras. Uh, they just got one dealio that'll keep them in business for five or 10 years. You know, this is the one camera that they're going to buy. Um, then, or, uh, Mike also said, okay, he was talking to him. Michael says, if you had to choose, would you take this or your Fuji? Come on now. This camera's not geared toward me. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's my Fuji all day long. But, but, if I was going super duper minimalist, if I was definitely going to try and sell all my stuff, you know, if I wanted to, to get more minimalist, if I wanted to get rid of excess baggage, if I, if I did want to do that, there's a good chance that I would seriously, seriously consider this camera. I've used the previous generations and they've been ridiculously handy. They've been ridiculously useful. So yes, I would probably give it some serious, serious thought, obviously after testing, but yeah, I mean, there would be a lot of shots that I wouldn't be able to get. But as I said, it's got a pretty close focusing. At least the RX 10 Mark III did. So you do get some blurry background shots or whatever, but I mean, if you're doing any kind of client work, if you're doing anything for anyone where you're getting money, you need more options than just this. You need the ability to change your depth of field, to, you know, really do some subject isolation, to really be able to do creative lighting with triggers and all that stuff. So this is not the, the perfect solution for everyone. Only the top five or so percent of people that do stuff professionally, that need it for client work, that need to make money, they would probably look at this as a backup camera though. Seriously. So just saying, just saying guys. So one last look, let's take a, a look here at the, um, Sony RX 10 Mark four already out. Ridiculously good camera. Uh, the specs on paper, at least flesh that out. And if it follows its predecessor, uh, like the RX 10 Mark two, uh, or the, uh, RX, 10 Mark III. This is going to be a fantastic camera. We're looking at a 20 megapixel, one inch X more rear side, backside illuminated uh, um, CMOS sensor, Bion's X image processor, Zeiss 2.4 to 4 zoom lens, 
24 to 600 millimeter, 2.36 million dot OLED TrueFinder EVF. I mean, it's going to have a fantastic EVF. Okay, uh, three inch, 1.4 million dot uh, tilting touchscreen. Unfortunate that it's not a fully articulating screen. Uh, ultra high definition, 4K, 30P video. Would have been nice if that had been 60P, but you can't have it all. Uh, full HD, 1080P, all the way up to 960 frames per second. That's ridiculous. Full 1080p at 960 frames per second. You talk about ridiculously slow mo, and you don't have to, you know, scale it up to 1080. You know, from like 480 or whatever the hell it was in the uh, the the RX 100 Mark IV. You can now have it in full HD. Fast hybrid uh, autofocus system with uh, 315 points. ISO 12,800 and 24 frames per second. Continuous shooting. Okay, that's ridiculous. 24 frames per second. I mean, that's insanity. Now, granted, it's only in JPEG, so we're not talking raw here, but again, that's insanity. Uh, Built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So if you're looking for that all-in-one camera, holy crap, this might just be it. I have left links down in the description if you guys are interested. Um, you can uh, pre-order this thing starting on Thursday, the 14th. Okay, so you can't start today, you can't start tomorrow, but you can get it on August the 14th, 2017, or starting the pre-orders. Uh, so if you're interested, I've left links down in the description, and I hope you guys support the channel by clicking on those. I really do appreciate it. So just a couple more comments, and then I'm going to get on out of here. But I will say this, boys and girls, you and uh, you and everyone else, as far as I can tell, have clicked my ASPCA link to help uh, those poor animals in the hurricane a lot. And I want to thank each and every single one of you that helped out those poor, defenseless, cold, lost, hungry animals that uh, have been affected during both Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma. I appreciate every bit of that support. You have no idea. Um, Michael says, different topic, I rented the A7 Mark II for a shoot, and honestly, I like the ergonomics of the A6500, uh, uh, the shutter speed wheel, and the ISO were just in a weird place. I would rather go into a menu instead. You're about the only one. <laughs> uh, Pedro says, future thought, uh, a Mark V with APS-C and the bigger A9 battery for 2000 I'd buy it on the spot. I think that I might too. So, anyway, guys, thanks so much for stopping in with the uh, photo video show. I appreciate y'all hanging out and don't forget if you haven't donated already to the ASPCA, uh, help out some animals during this uh, hurricane season. I really do appreciate it. See you guys later. Peace.